Hello students! Today we are going to talk about El Nino and La Nina, which are things that you may have heard before, um, but if you've heard them like on the media, a lot of times you've heard a lot of misinformation. So we're going to talk about them in scientific ways. Uh, so first of all, here is a piece of information that is not scientific, and I just wanted to put it out there, um, because this is what a lot of people think of when they think of El Nino. So here's what El Nino is not. I am El Nino. All other tropical storms must bow before El Nino. Yo soy El Nino. For those of you who don't habla Espanol, El Nino is Spanish for the Nino. Okay, so that is definitely what El Nino is not. Um, it's not even a tropical storm, so um, obviously that was just made for entertainment, but it also leads to a lot of misconceptions, so we're going to talk today about what El Nino really is, and then I want you to think about um, how that might affect our island if we have an El Nino year. So before we talk about El Nino, which is um, an abnormal occurrence, we need to talk about what normal looks like in the Pacific Ocean. So this is Pacific Ocean, uh, here's the United States, here's uh, California over here, this would be South America, and over here is Australia. And so you're kind of looking at the ocean as a cross section here with the warm water on top, like we learned because it is less dense, and the cold water on bottom because it is more dense. So here's what it normally looks like, and normally there are these surface winds that are going to move water. Um, across the Pacific here towards Australia, okay? So they are moving towards the west. Um, this is going to push, like, clouds and storms over towards Australia. Uh, in addition to that wind pushing the weather patterns over towards Australia, it's also going to move the top layer of the ocean over towards Australia. So the warm water that's on the top of the ocean is going to be moved by that wind over towards Australia, making lots of warm water here, which means that there's a space for more water to fill in. So if warm water is moving and something has to take its place, cold water is going to move to the surface over here by South America. So this is called upwelling. Upwelling is when uh, cold and nutrient-rich water comes from the bottom of the ocean, upwells or comes up to the top. Um, and because cold water tends to have more dissolved oxygen, it's going to be an area um, of higher NPP and more animals are going to grow there. So it's going to be a really good thing for fishermen to have these um, areas of upwelling. So the basic basics of normal conditions is you have really good fishing over here, cold waters, and warmer waters over here with lots of weather patterns, because warm waters can cause um, lots of storms and, and uh, lots of rain. So that's normal. Here's just a visual. Um, same thing, really cold over here towards South America, and over here in the west at Australia, really warm and wet. So El Nino is when um, something abnormal happens. So it occurs in tropical waters, meaning near the equator. So we don't feel the effects as much in California, though we will feel them. Feel them. Um, and it was called El Nino because it typically, the, this weather pattern usually happens around Christmas. And so during Christmas, people are thinking about the baby Jesus. And in Spanish, um, baby means, or baby is said, El Nino. Uh, so that's where the name comes from, and that's why they, uh, they, we call it that. So during an El Nino year, remember normally winds are blowing across the Pacific towards Australia, but during El Nino, those trades winds stop. So there's no longer a wind pushing everything over towards Australia the way it's supposed to. Um, so that's going to gonna mess with both the weather pattern and the clouds that were happening and also the water pattern and what was happening um, in the ocean. So now, instead of all the warm water being pushed towards Australia, the warm water can stay spread out across the whole Pacific. And that means that these, um, these weather patterns, these rain and storms, are not going to be pushed towards Australia. They're going to sit right over here um, in South America that is not used to getting rain. So there's going to be lots of rain here that they're not used to. It could cause flooding. Um, then over here in Australia, they're used to getting the rain. They depend on it. 
And so that is going to cause droughts in Australia because they aren't getting the rain that they need because those winds have stopped. Then overall, the ocean has a lot to do with how, um, what the temperature is uh, above ground. And so if the whole ocean is warm uh, because those winds aren't happening, then the temperatures in all of these places are going to be very warm. And that is something you can see. It reaches up towards California, and we would notice a different weather pattern in an El Nino year. Um, so that's basically El Nino. And then uh, the, occasionally there's also La Nina. And so La Nina is named that because it's the opposite of El Nino. Um, so other, other names for it could be the anti-El Nino or El Viejo, which means the old person. Um, and this is the opposite. So if normally those winds blow across the, the Pacific during a La Nina year, the winds would blow even more across the Pacific. And so there's going to be even more of the, um, the, the cold water coming up to replace the warm water, causing this ocean to be really cold over here in the east. Um, which is going to make the temperature over here colder than it normally is. Um, so the trade winds are increasing and it causes, um, oh, like we said, it causes more upwelling over here. So just visually you can see that El Nino and La Nina are, are opposites. Um, so El Nino is when it's really warm. La Nina is when it's really cold. Um, and yeah, those are the basics of El Nino and La Nina. So I just wanted you to see um, one more visual that can explain it a little better than I can. And then we'll be through. But perhaps the most chaotic weather phenomenon is El Nino. El Nino is a complex anomaly in the Earth's weather and climate. It appears every three to seven years, manifesting as a huge pool of unusually warm water in the Pacific Ocean, west of South America. It's named by the um, fishermen who lived in Peru because it tended to happen around the time of Christmas. So they called it the child in Spanish, meaning the Christ child. And so it was given the name El Nino for a warming effect. Its arrival causes a number of strange things to happen, including a dramatic increase in rainfall in South America, while at the same time, droughts in Australia. And these extremes cause a great deal of upset to everyone. We still don't completely understand what causes El Nino, but its influence on the weather is second only to the changing of the seasons. And we're never really totally sure when it will return El Nino can bring some very dramatic changes in weather conditions. But La Nina, the cooling phase in the Eastern Pacific, can also have very dramatic effects on climate around the world. It brought flooding to Queensland during the end of 2010 and early 2011, flooding right across Indonesia into Sri Lanka, floods uh, in South Africa, flooding in uh, Brazil. So it can have huge impacts on weather changes in climatic systems right around the world. The heating of the, of, the, of the oceans creates an imbalance. So you're getting different pressures setting up all the time in different areas of the world. And this is what sets up our global wind patterns. OK. Um, so two major things I want you to get out of that. Um, one, that, uh, well, of course, the, the, the weather patterns in El Nino uh, bringing more hot hot weather, um, especially in the east, or I mean, sorry, the west in Australia. Um, but I wanted you to hear um, how often it happens. So it happens every four to seven years. Um, and it's not predictable. We don't know exactly when it's going to happen. Um, and also, um, why it happens, they didn't really address in the video, and I didn't really address it in this lecture, because honestly, scientists don't really know. Um, so they're not exactly sure what's causing it or what causes it um, every four to seven years. And so it's still kind of a mystery to us, but when it's happening, um, they take a lot of data and they try to figure it out. So um, that was the end of our lecture, and then I just want you guys to think about, and I'll ask you tomorrow, how might El Nino and La Nina affect our island? So um, we are in California. We won't get, like, the big effects that they might see in the south, 
Um, but we will still feel the effects of El Nino, so think about how would that affect our economy, um, the people on our island, our jobs, um, what might be some of the effects. All right, I will see you in class. Thank you.